Anita and Sinatra. Anita and Babyface. Anita and Martha? Next on Martha, Anita Baker. She'll be here for Christmas. Cooking and performing holiday classics. She'll show us how to make smothered chicken and she'll show us how to make music. Then gerbils and gliders and rats. Oh my. Non-traditional pets kids are going crazy for. Plus, Pawpaw's long lost daughter, the furry reunion, next. explain in a minute why I have Pawpaw here with me. I've been feeding him a little bit of uh, raw meat, his favorite treat. We have a great show for you today. My favorite pet keeper, Mark Marone, joins us. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi. <laughs> little menagerie is there. I've got Rufus the rat. Oh, good. Well, we're talking about small pets for those families that really can't have a dog or a cat. but. Can a have rat. a rat. Like, this is perfect, Martha. <laughs> this will be a great pet for you. They're I know. Clean. Well, I have lots of those bite. already in the farm. You buy them in pet stores? Huh? And believe it or not, they're as smart as dogs and cats. I'm, I know they are. I think they're brilliant and they're very cute, too. You hear that? You got a compliment from Martha. Who's afraid, of, rat who's afraid of rats in the audience? <laughs> see, and you'll see why you don't have to be afraid of rats. Mark will tell us. Every day for the past week, we've been unveiling Martha Stewart everyday Christmas trees and ornaments that are now available at Kmart, the Martha Stewart everyday trees. And today we're revealing our fifth Martha Stewart Christmas tree, which is available. It's the Friendship Tree, which is this very, very elegant tree right there, um, decorated according to an old German tradition. A newlywed couple would own a, a tree with a grape ornament, uh, which symbolizes friendship or sharing. Uh, and uh, the grapes symbolize the wine. It's a six and a half foot uh, bear paw mountain tree and all the ornaments, well, almost all the ornaments are from the Martha Stewart Everyday uh, Twilight line. And I just got back at lunchtime, I like to uh, take little uh, jaunts through the city and, uh, and we went uh, over, I walked over from the studio, which is on 26th Street down to 14th Street and I visited with the store manager, a surprise visit at the Kmart store, just to see what was on the shelves. They always love those surprise visits from Martha. And uh, all of you know, the stores, you know, there's customers there buying things and I make little comments and they all look rather surprised. And then all of a sudden the store manager is there because somebody's told him Martha's in the store. But uh, Bob was a great guy and, um, and he is uh, new to that store. He, the shelves looked great. I was worried that all the Christmas ornaments that I'm telling you about every day are sold out. But they're there, the shelves were quite full and I was very happy with the whole display. Uh, we're happy to announce that this particular tree will find a new home uh, at the end of today at the Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital of New York Presbyterian, which is one of the largest providers of children's health care services in the country. And we're sending our best holiday wishes to all the children and the staff. And uh, New York Presbyterian, we hope you enjoy this tree. We, we love doing this. Between now and Christmas, we'll give away 12 trees, which is part of our 12 Days of Christmas. And along with these trees, I'm gonna be showing you the rest of the 12 gifts um, for giving. These are homemade gifts that won't break the bank. Uh, I've already showed you how to make this beautiful cyclamen planter. Uh, this is so easy to do. Uh, this wonderful tinsel stocking that Melissa Newfill designed. The scarves that are still on eBay, au being auctioned off. Uh, there's signature scarves. I've signed each and every one of them. And these beautiful uh, cookies that look like candy canes. And today I'm going to show you this beautiful present. These are homemade crackers. And these are melt in your mouth. And today we're going to do the blue cheese and pecan version. And it's a wonderful gift for everyone to enjoy. And if you pack them up like this, any teacher, any close friend, any one of your um, uh, babysitters is going to just adore getting a present like that. 
Uh, now is the time to tell you why Pawpaw's here. Where is Pawpaw? Oh, there he is. Oh, he loves you. <laughs> He's just right there hoping that you have a little bit of meat to give him. Um, we uh, got a letter earlier this week, and I spoke with viewer Cassandra Morris. She wrote into the show telling us how she had bought a chow named Sachi and was told by the owner that Sachi was the offspring of a very famous chow called Pawpaw. Well, it turned out that my chow Pawpaw is the father of her chow. <laughs> and uh, when I spoke to her, I invited her to come to the studio so that Sachi could meet her dad for the first time and get to know him. So they're here. Um, welcome, Cassandra, Morris, and Sachi. <laughs> <laughs> she's a beauty. Thank you. Oh, she's Thank so you. cute. I guess you could let her off. Yeah. yeah, let's see what she does. She'll probably run away from Papa. <laughs> I think Papa will be very interested in his little girl. <laughs> oh, Papa. Aren't they cute? So she is the girl size. She really is beautiful yeah. and very well groomed. You're doing a great job, Cassandra. Because Thank you. Uh, Chow's take um, like a monthly grooming. Do you do, does she get a bath every month? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. And I brush her every other day at yeah, least. Yeah, I, I do it's the same. It's necessary. Yep, and they stay very, very pretty. Papa, oh, she's Ooh. making, oh, look at her, showing her oh, little she's... teeth. Oh. <laughs> she's being a female. <laughs> <laughs> They're very well behaved. Um, so what do you think? I think Papa loves her. Oh, yeah, I think Papa <laughs> loves her too. Well, Papa was, uh, Papa was on the show circuit for about four years. He was at Westminster twice. Uh, he did very well in the show ring. And uh, has Sachi been in the ring? Yes, she has actually. That's where we did found her. Did she finish her. Her, her championship? She was two wins away from oh. the championship when we found her. Oh. And we were so persistent. We just absolutely loved her when we saw her. And a few months after that, the breeder actually offered her to us. Oh, well, she's a beauty. And I mean, this is like a dream come true. We can't <laughs> believe that we're here. This is exactly what I wanted. I mean, I wanted them to meet. And oh well, for them there, to look, know. and she's posing for the for the camera at every every uh, step of the way. Hey, and Papa. Honestly, she's very laid back and relaxed. Oh, she's usually, great. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's having a great time. She's probably well, just mad that she hasn't met her dad yet. She's almost four. <laughs> <laughs> well, Papa's good. Papa was just nine, and uh, he is uh, a handsome chow and a very very loyal friend. He's fantastic. Well, uh, you can just take a seat in the front row okay. and just keep your eye on, your, on the dogs, okay? I definitely They'll will. They'll be Thanks. wandering around. If they get a little um, rough, you can uh, grab her, okay? Yep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's Such showing her stuff. Such my first Such guest today <laughs> is, uh, oh, and by the way, see my see my t-shirt? This is Francesca, who does not like Hassan, uh, like um, the uh, Sachi at all. There, she's back there, and she just would not be uh, getting along. She was barking at her, jealous. My first guest today is a superstar, who after taking several years off from her music to raise a family, is now back and better than ever. She has a wonderful new Christmas album uh, that will get you in the mood for Christmas, and we are thrilled to have her here with us, not only to sing, but also to do something she loves, to cook. Please welcome eight-time Grammy Award winner, Anita Baker. <laughs> Hey Joey, maybe uh, maybe Papa should uh, leave the studio, Joey. What do you think? Well, I don't know. He's just he's a little being a little annoying to <laughs> Sachi, and Sachi is our guest today. <laughs> Well, Ever excuse the great hostess. me. Uh, Ever the great hostess. <laughs> well, it's so great to have you here. Oh, I'm excited. And how is it getting back to work and having a, a beautiful new album out? Oh my goodness, it's exciting. I get to come here, talk to you, meet you. You know, I'm dream walking right now. <laughs> you know that. Where do you live? I live in Gross Point, Michigan, about 20 minutes east of downtown Detroit on beautiful Lake St. Oh, Clair. it's so beautiful there. I've I been there many it. times because that was the headquarters of Kmart. For, Absolutely, you know, in Southfield, yes. yes. So on uh, Big Beaver. Absolutely, yes. Troy. <laughs> I am. I have come many times to your neighborhood. Oh my goodness! So it's uh, it's beautiful, and Gross Point is fantastic. It's so just so a great place to raise a family. I bet uh, a great place to just you know have good neighbors and and uh, just be a mom. Yeah, it's wonderful. So what made you come back? 
Well, you know. I mean, you had such a success. Eight Grammys and all this, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> and a beautiful voice. How is your voice? I heard it on the record, but yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm, again, it's overwhelming to come back and to uh, be involved in, and meet people like yourself, uh, have all these great new experiences. I've worked with some uh, great musicians on this uh, Christmas record that I so have never worked with before. Oh, my goodness, George Duke, Joe Sample, Larry Carlton, uh, Nathan East, and Ricky Lawson I always work with. So but these are just tons amazing of great guys. great guys, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you'll just love this album when you hear it, and you'll hear um, Anita sing later on in the program. I hear you watched my show um, ever since I had it, uh, I, I produced it out of Turkey Hill Road. Oh, absolutely. I, when I say I'm dream walking, <laughs> I have projected myself here a million times. I even, we even Why did you call? You can just call and say, can I come on? You okay. know. <laughs> Who knew? Well, you can. You well, can. you know what? We even have, though, we even have a musical connection. Uh, Keb Mo, oh. who did your theme music back then? Oh, he's fantastic, amazing. Well, he just did it like like four years ago. He's he's an amazing, uh, beautiful musician, absolutely, and a beautiful person. Yes, indeed. So has he written some of your songs? No, but we're working on it. We ran into him uh, at a studio on the West Coast when we were doing the last record, and hopefully, if you're watching, if you're listening, come on, yeah, bring me some music. He's wonderful, amazing. Yeah. Guy. So your last name is Baker. That's me. Um, are you a baker? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. I've got... Like what? Like what? Oh, my goodness. My mom had uh, taught me this wonderful uh, homemade bread recipe. Of course, when I was little, I didn't want to do it. But now it's the thing that connects me to her. That's, and, yeah. and also, but there's another connection with that, uh, with you and I, because I've learned to modify that recipe at the second rising stage, right. this is where I can put the different cheeses on top. Mm -hmm. After you butter it, you can put the poppy seeds or whatever alteration you want to make. Right, you so. can start to be inventive. Absolutely. And so creative. We, yeah. But you are. You are inventive and you are creative. Well, that's why we, that's why I think I was always been so connected to the show because, you know, at Christmas time, you, you were doing the boxwood hedges oh, yes. back then. I spent a fortune in <laughs> greens at the local nursery. There are greens all over the house. My husband thought I was insane. But, uh, Did you thatch your fr the front of your house? We thatched the front oh, of wish. our house one year, put chicken wire up, and yes, the whole thing was boxwood. Yes. It looked gorgeous. I just had two of the square boxwood wreaths on my front door, the twin doors, just like that yeah. one. It didn't look as good as they did on TV, but I got it done. <laughs> when we come back, Anita's going to show me and you her family recipe for a wonderful comfort food, smothered chicken. Later, Mark Malone shows Martha great pet ideas for your family. And Martha's 12 days of Christmas continues with a delicious homemade gift idea, blue cheese and pecan icebox crackers. We'll be right back. Well, we're back with Anita Baker. Oh, and, and some birds. They're wow. squawking away over there. Oh, wow. Hi. Coral Ann. Hi. She recognizes you. Oh, that's Coral Ann. She's trying to get my attention. She's my bird. Oh, my goodness. And she's, yep, she's, isn't she doing that, Mark? Mm-hmm. This is Martha Renser to me. She, <laughs> wow. She wants to see me. <laughs> well, Anita's going to show us a delicious recipe. The kitchen smells so great, doesn't it, Wes? It's getting it. Doesn't it smell fantastic? Like and uh, this is smothered chicken, you call it. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. an old-fashioned basic chicken recipe, right? Absolutely. The basic of the basic. I uh, learned to do this uh, a while ago when I was little. Kids had to be, be busy in the kitchen growing up. In your house? Absolutely. You couldn't just, you know, hang around. There were no video games. So you like a tablespoon of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. Absolutely. You salt and pepper the, sh the chicken. This you is one whole organic it. chicken. And, and organic, you know, we just... Uh, we want things to, to disintegrate the way they should, and uh, we don't want a science project for our chicken. I just, you know, <laughs> want a real chicken. No science projects. Okay, and we're just going to put the chicken in the nice hot oil. I like to go skin down first uh, to get it to, to brown, so you brown really it all. quickly. Yeah. Come on, baby. Don't do this on television. They took the they took the wingtips off. Would you always would you take the wingtips off? Well, I would take the wingtips off. I would take the backs uh -huh. and uh, all of that and make some stock okay. and keep it in the freezer. Because um, you know, again, sometimes you want just the real deal. You know, you don't always want stock out of a can. You know, 
Or at least I don't. See, I, don't. I when you see her just handling those um, tongs, you know that she's a cook. Well, you know, there are three men at my house, two little ones and one big one, and uh, they gotta have it, and they gotta yep. have it right. Yep. So, but yeah, we're just gonna I'll watch that, that but that one's already browned, and this looks so great. Through the magic of television, yeah. Right. And this fabulous kitchen you have. Yeah, you like it? Unbelievable, my God. How's your kitchen at home? It's not like this. No, but, Trust it's, me. but I bet it's fabulous. Trust me. I it's bet you have. It's a wonderful kitchen, but I, I take this one any day. <laughs> and now we're gonna just take this out of the pan. I'm so excited, I can't believe I'm, I'm so doing glad. this. We're cooking together. Yeah, what are you doing for the holidays? Well, you know what? We're going, actually, we're going to decorate. We haven't decorated yet. And we use one of your uh, decorating techniques from back in the day. We like colored lights. Now, but, but just to get back to this for a second. Yeah, do I add some butter? Some people are going to be crazy. They don't want the chicken fat. You yeah. can drain that off if you like. Uh, but, but you want to like keep it. we like the flavor, yes. Okay. And we're going to put in... A little bit of butter. We won't say how much. No, that's four tablespoons. I'll tell you. Because they're going to call me, Anita. You know, <laughs> they have my number. They don't have your number. I'll leave this to the professional to tell you. But it's is, usually, yes. This is two tablespoons of flour. That's right. for the roux. Okay. And that's... we want usually two parts flour to four parts butter. Okay. And we're going to just stir this until it's the color that you want. Because the color of this roux is going to be the color of your final gravy. So if you like it really deep, dark, then you let it cook. And this, I mean, this is taking me back to, again, when I started cooking, uh, kids running around in church, you so know, So did the you cook suppers. church suppers? You had to because This there is were, great food for a church there supper. There was a huge congregation and children had to busy themselves. And so this is one of the ways that I learned to cook. So you don't want to burn this, but you want to darken Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So it's slow cooking, not too hot. That's and right. You're cooking the flour. So what would you, what would you, um, el what else would you serve at the, at the uh, church suppers? Oh my goodness, there'd be the homemade bread, the homemade rolls. There's always uh, green beans with uh, potatoes and onions, uh, basically stewed down to within an inch are you of a greens? Lives. Are you a greens person? Absolutely, absolutely. Broccoli rabe we love, green uh -huh. beans we love, uh, and just basically any kind of organic vegetable I'm in love with. And this pan, this pan is a dream. It's a good pan, it's yeah. It's so, it's just heating it so evenly because... All Clad gives us all these pans for the set is, because I just think they are fantastic. Because you know the butter could burn if the, mm -hmm. if the, the heating element is not... Oh, so it's, it's beautiful. Good. You should see this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great saute pan. Well, we're going to be back in a moment to finish up the beautiful Anita smothered chicken. Later on, pet expert Mark Marone shares some great pet ideas for this holiday season. Would you believe a rat is one of them? And a very special holiday performance from Anita Baker. Please, stay with us. Is your kitchen out of date, outrageous looking, or just an outright disaster? You could win your dream kitchen. Martha and GE want to give you and your family the ultimate dream kitchen. The dream kitchen of all dream kitchens. You could win a brand new kitchen, including innovative appliances from GE, as well as fabulous flooring and custom cabinetry. Presented by GE. Imagination at work. Go to MarthaStewart.com and find out how to enter to win Martha's Dream Kitchen, presented by GE. Enter now. Anita Baker, and I, I can't. Oh, hello! Yes, you again. And uh, All Clad just called. And I see there, people are watching television. This power of television. All Clad just called, and they're the sending. People. They're sending you an entire set of pans. <laughs> Mercy! Isn't that fun? That's so, amazing. so you'll have all new pants. This okay. Is a perfect so now, pan. is that the is that the perfect color? Yeah. That's yeah, that's a yeah, it's that's a beautiful good. color. So and now we you put add some onions in while they were gone. Oh yeah, uh, we one gone. small uh, white onion cut up, sure. chopped. And see, this is the good stage where people kind of get crazy and they're afraid to pour in the liquid. It's starting to thicken because this, the flour and the water and the butter and the drippings from the chicken and it's yeah, just... Yeah, see, it's looking like a good ooh, color. It's getting... See, this is, yeah. It it's a nice... It smells good, too. Golden brown, but you have to wait for this. You can't just, you know... Because all the while we were on the break, we were actually doing this. this I was actually just standing here stirring and talking. Yep. And got peace just for doing that. Just like you're in the kitchen, you know, just <laughs> yeah, like you're at home. Absolutely. So, uh, how much more liquid? Do you think more? Well, uh... That was about a cup. Uh, just a tiny a bit, bit more. more. Maybe okay. a quarter more just to let everything cook in and then at this point 
And this is where we get the idea or the attitude about smothered chicken, because at this point, you're going to put the chicken back in, and it's just mm. going to kind of marinate around in the gravy, and it's going to be boiling up over it, and it's kind of smothered chicken. Yep. And uh, we'll just cook this what until... What a perfect... This is a perfect Saturday night supper, isn't it? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, it or is delicious. Or if I've been away, sometimes I come into New York to do things like this, and I miss a plane or something, and if I'm late getting home... And it's, I make it's on this, the stove. it's all, right. all forgiven. Okay. <laughs> all forgiven. And, and so uh, we have one all done over here. And this is fantastic. That. Look at this. Oh, yummy. So, and uh, Anita says you have to have mashed potatoes. Yes. And you have to have steamed broccoli. Right. Or broccoli and, rob if, you know, you get a little sophisticated. And we have both of those. Oh, yummy. Now, how often do you go down into the inner city of Detroit? Well, you know what? I'm 15 minutes away from downtown Detroit. And uh, we had, which by the way, I hear is one of your, I mean, it is your biggest market, my oh, hometown. It is. We love Martha Detroit at home. is fabulous. Yes. We love you at home. That's for you. And I mean, who would have thought that, you know, a little inner city kid from Detroit would be standing here making dinner with Martha? A little, a little kid from New Jersey, from Jersey City. I was born in Jersey City, really? by the way. Yes. I Thing yes, about. Jersey City, that. and you know uh, grew up in Nutley, New Jersey. Where are you gonna I go? want a wing, of course. I knew my that. You favorite, see? see, I went right there. Okay, that's what I want. And I'm mm. gonna take one too. My boys would have what they call a bone leg. They do, couldn't say. Do they drumstick. fight you? Do they fight you? And then you have to have some gravy, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. <laughs> <laughs> And this is oh, this is this my looks... Martha moment where I get to sprinkle the yes. parsley. Fantastic! Now that is certainly a, a delicious dinner, and one that you have to have for your family. This is beautiful. I love it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And uh, sort of so it's not fricassee chicken. It's no, smothered chicken. No, and, has and, no cream in it. No. It has a little bit of butter. <laughs> and. Uh, and just delicious. Teeny, tiny, so what else do you gravy. make? What are you making? What else do you make for like well, Christmas and New and Year's? Um, Thanksgiving was such a big holiday for us. We did the turkeys for Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're going to do the hams and maybe a duck this year for Christmas. I do my mom's homemade bread recipe. I save that for Christmas. Mm. And, um, you know, basically uh, whatever fresh greens are in season. So you, you hang out at home for Christmas? Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. Nice. Although we're going to be taping mm. some things. Oh, delicious. yummy. Thank you. Well, Anita um, <laughs> certainly was a great guest and she is a real cook. And back uh, later in the show, she's going to sing for us a very special holiday song. Stay with us. Let's go. Coming up next, if your kids want a dog or cat this holiday season and you don't want to give in, Pet expert Mark Marone has some great alternatives. And Martha's 12 Days of Christmas continues with a wonderful homemade gift, blue cheese and pecan icebox crackers. Please, stay with us. I think uh, at some point, almost all children ask their parents for a cat or a dog. But for some families, it's not always practical, not uh, the perfect pet. So next time the kids ask you, consider a small, furry, low-maintenance alternative. Um, and I'm not talking about a big bird like Coraline or Harry or uh, a big rabbit. Yeah, he's certainly not small. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, Mark's here with his favorite picks, uh, and Mark is our pet keeper. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, too. And uh, you certainly brought a lot of nice, furry little friends here, but some are dogs, and some are cats, and some are rabbits. So these are not what we're talking about today. Some are but... instead of a dog. Yes. <laughs> like Rufus the rat here. Uh, hi, Rufus. Which, Martha, you don't want to hold uh, him, do Yes, you? I'll hold okay. him. See, I'll pet, hold him. Pet, pet rats Rufus. are only guilty by association. They are not at all like the wild relatives you see living in the sewers. They're bred to be pets. Right. We're sold in pet stores. They're very, very intelligent. They have the cognitive skills of a dog or a cat. Really? Oh, yeah, look at all the experiments they do with oh, rats yeah. doing mazes and things exactly. inside uh, you know, laboratories and such. Hmm. And they, they're, they're sentient. They want to be held. They want to be petted. And most importantly, they recognize children as individuals. So when a child knows that his pet recognizes that child from anybody else, then that child wants to take care of it, right. hopefully. It doesn't work in my house. <laughs> <laughs> They're very, very easy to keep. They do best in a large wire cage like this. 
And do they stay in the cage? Or, or? They stay in the cage as long as the child keeps the door closed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and if one does um, perchance get uh, out of the cage, it will come back if it's food. I is had kept a rat there. when I was a kid who I used to leave the the bedroom door open, the bedroom window open, and he would actually go outside and play in the garden. And like Peter Pan, he'd come back and go into the window and back into his cage in my bedroom. And and you know, once you have a cage like that, they're very easy to keep. They eat these rodent blocks. Oh, those are delicious. Yeah, they're delicious. Look at yes. this, like astronaut oh, fantastic. food. Fantastic. You could also feed them a seed mix like this. Well, they should have variety. I yeah, think. they do like right. variety, and they like fruits and vegetables. You see, I have apples and carrots and celery here, and Murphy, my vegetarian dog, is chowing away at it. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem with rats as pets is that they do need some veterinary care. They, they they don't live long. They only live about four years or so, and they're very prone to respiratory infections. Oh, they are. Yeah, so, so you have to take that into what consideration. What about getting cold or um, or hot in apartments? All these small animals are good as far as um, temperature ranges, especially mm. hamsters. These guys here. Look at well, him. See, every I, I know so many children with hamsters, and they really, <laughs> really care about their little hamster pets. Well, and hamsters are great so because cute. they're so handleable and they're very interactive. I mean, you can keep a hamster in a glass cage like we have here, but look at some of the stuff kids have to play with with hamsters. Look at this. Remember the Flintstone car? Oh, how cute. <laughs> so how does he get in here? <laughs> you put him in, and then once he's inside there, he's able to roll. I don't think it's going to roll here, but the little opening here, you put the hamster in there, and he can roll, over roll here. around the house. Let's here, try it, try Let's it see. here. Let's put the ham in. But see, that's what I mean by, by kids have to be interactive with it. But you have to remember to take him out. Yeah, well, that would help. <laughs> and don't let him roll down the stairs, too. So I mean, That's a cute little Hamsters toy. are very, very flexible. They eat the same diet as the rats. They're very, very easy. The only downside is that they sleep all day. There you go. Oh, Murphy's uh, hopping along. Oh, that's so cute. Just like, yeah, like now, is a is a guinea pig a small pet, a small furry pet, or is guinea that a large pet? Guinea pigs are not small furry pets. The uh, other small furry pet that I have here are gerbils. Now, gerbils are nice because hamsters like to live alone. So many women say to me, "Gee, I, I have two kids. I need some two animals that can live in the same cage." So the best pet for you would be a gerbil. And gerbils are one of my favorite pets. You know, we had hamsters, we had gerbils, we had rats, we had guinea pigs. We had every kind of pet. And we all loved them. We loved these little animals. Because this, this, they're so interactive, so, especially so gerbils. So that looks a lot like the rat. No, look at his tail. It's a fluffy tail. Fluffy, yeah, I know, but it still looks like a rat. And, and these are nice because a gerbil, all right, Murphy, you're not going to push him out. A gerbil can live in pairs. You can keep two male siblings or two female siblings, and they're awake all day. They need the ca same cage. Oh, I they see. need the same food as the hamster so, does. So like a cage like this or smaller? No, they do better in glass tanks. A oh, cage like do. this is good for a pet rat. Okay. Guinea pigs are another animal that do best in wire cages, yeah. too. Let me show you my guinea pigs here. This is Mel. I love these. Oh. I love them, too. I want to do that whole guinea pig oh, series. Yes. Here, hold the, hold the piggy. Oh, how about this one? This one? Now, guinea pigs are nice because they These make noise. When kids come oh. in the room, they squeak and whistle oh. and recognize the children Don't vocally. Bite. Don't and bite. And vocally is really, really important. Plus, they love being held. But a guinea pig's a little bit more care than your average child can do alone. So, mom has to really take care of the guinea pig. People say, How old does the child have to be to get its first pet? I go, These are fat. <laughs> I think I feed they, them well. Oh, they are they so eat a lot. fat. Guinea they're pigs so need cute. a guinea pig diet pellet like yeah. that, plus Timothy Hay, and they're unique because they also need vitamin C. So you have to give your guinea pigs vitamin C capsules. They need vitamin C just like human beings right. do. Now we talked about, oh, you know what I have too? I gotta show you this, a hairless guinea pig. You know, guinea pigs do shed a lot. So if you don't like shedding, look at this. Oh my gosh. You have hairless cats. Oh my gosh, it looks like a little pig. Hairless dogs. Oh, <laughs> or a little hippopotamus. Oh, but it might get cold in the I know. Winter. That's why I well, that's why I have these guys. Yeah. See my other hairless ones in a glass tank. But oh, normally okay. you keep guinea pigs in a wire cage. So but the hairless if, you're, ones if a child is going to get one of these small furry animals, they should get a book from you. Do your research right. first. Do your research. Get to know what it has to eat. Know what it has to, uh, how it has to sleep, how it has to live. Not all and furry pets are for children. Though. Oh, oh no. Remember this? Oh, I'm not no. going to sugar, sugar bat. Sugar glider. Oh my God. That's a marsupial. Yeah, that's a small furry pet for an adult. Oh. These are way too much work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These are and way too much work for a child to take care oh, of. Oh, yes. But and it lives, in a, it lives in a little bag in a cage and uh -huh. it flies all over your house. They glide. I had one land right on my face, like this, <laughs> remember? That's why. That was right 
quite insane. shocking. I remember all that. It didn't hurt me, though, but it's an odd feeling. They're nice for working adults because they're awake all night and they sleep all day, but, but the care is what very if you, specific. What if you want to sleep? If you want to sleep, you're awake. <laughs> Then don't get a sugar glider. Get a gerbil. They sleep all night. No, but these are all very interesting alternatives to the dog and the cat. And and Mark will tell you, just like I will tell you, and and other serious uh, pet people, uh, that uh, Christmas is not the time to go out and buy the cute little dog no, or the cute is little too busy, cat. Then. Yeah, it's too. And you're not going to pay attention. You're not going to be. Uh, training them, you're going to be stepping on them, you're not going to remember to feed them. So it's the, kind of the worst time to get my a serious My first dog pet. was given to me by my grandfather when I was five years old on Christmas oh. Eve. And two days later, my mother and father brought it to the dog pound because they, it wasn't the right oh, time for them see, to take care of and a we dog. Don't, and we don't want to have a lot of animals ending up at the pound, unwanted or unloved. So uh, t it takes a little bit more time to do those kinds of things. And listen to some expert like Mark because uh, then you'll learn how to be responsible and at wonderful pet owner. For more information on Mark and his pets, go to our website, MarthaStewart.com. We'll be right back. Next, Martha's going to show you how to make the perfect hostess gift, Icebox Crackers. And later, legendary singer Anita Baker gets us in the holiday spirit with a favorite Christmas classic. Stay with us. Martha's 30 Things You Need to Know. If you missed any of these 30 great ideas. Now they're all in one place. Go to our website. Watch the video or print the booklet. Enjoy. Hotel accommodations provided by the Westin New York and Times Square featuring Westin's renowned heavenly beds. For an outstanding New York experience, visit this superb location. Here's another great idea for our 12 days of handmade Christmas, uh, Christmas gifts. These are handmade, homemade, inexpensive to do, and your, your friends are just going to love you if you hand them a box of blue cheese icebox crackers. And it's great because um, these crackers can be frozen in advance, um, the, just the dough. You can slice them up as you need them and bake them, and they're ready for, um, for a gift, but they're also ready just to entertain with. Uh, they're wonderful with a glass of wine, and a wedge of cheese. They're so very, very easy to make. Um, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour and three quarters of a cup of pecan halves. So grind these up. Just pulse until the pecans are a little bit chopped up. And it does help to have a food processor. I don't think you can make these so easily and so quickly without. Um, four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And now comes the flavor. Three ounces of a wonderful blue cheese, a Roquefort cheese. Um, good quality. Always use a good quality and a, and a fresh cheese. Some of it fell out. Okay. And now just process this. So there's no salt. There's no pepper. Um, it's just the simplest recipe. And they are extremely flavorful. And just as long as that gets all broken up and it almost forms a ball. You see how it's starting to gather in the bowl? That's when you know that it is ready to form into a log. So it couldn't be simpler. And then have a piece of plastic wrap on your counter um, and roll it into a log. Mm, oh, that's very delicious. It smells great if you, like, if you like blue cheese. If you don't like blue cheese, it smells horrible. <laughs> And um, again, uh, the, the size of the cracker depends on the diameter of the log that you form this into. So if you want oh, a small cracker, you can just pat it together like this, roll it up like this. And these can be frozen, as I said. Um, you can get them cold, but before you cut them into the wafers, make sure that they stay in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours. And then if you're going to keep them in longer than 24 hours, put them in the freezer. This one has already been chilled, and I'll show you how easy it is to slice. We are making a tray here, and they have been sliced, oh, a little less than a quarter of an inch. This is a great knife, this wonderful Wusthof Japanese cleaver-type knife, just like that. Get these right into an oven, 325 degrees, for about 25 minutes. And we have some baked, and we have some uh, over there. That looks, I'll just switch. 
Mm. And you can keep the trays going in and out of the oven if you're gonna give these for presents. Cool them on a rack. And pack them up in a beautiful box. These are the ones that are cooled enough so that we can actually pack them up. You can get these little tins um, at the uh, container store and elsewhere. Uh, put a little piece of um, wrapping paper right in them. This is another kind of corrugated paper that you can use. Four of these are the Parmesan rosemary. These are blue cheese pecan, like we just made. Gruyere thyme, which are delicious, a little bit um, spicy. And these are the most, these are cheddar um, cornmeal with a little cayenne pepper in them. And then once you make crackers, you can make more um, flavor, you, uh, alter the flavors. Um, just like Anita said, just keep adding a little bit here and there and you'll make your own personal crackers. This is a great, great um, gift. And Wes and Angie are standing by. They have a cracker for everyone in the audience. <laughs> for the recipe, go to our website on marthastewart.com. Next, Anita Baker is gonna sing a Christmas classic. Again, and uh, Anita is going to be performing I'll Be Home for Christmas from her new holiday album, Christmas Fantasy. Anita Baker and her producer. Mr. Barry Eastman. Barry Eastman. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Barry. It's great. <laughs>
We'll be back in just a moment. Now, Martha Stewart's best ideas come to DVD with classic Thanksgiving, homemade holidays, and favorite family dinners, plus fun extras. Martha Stewart on DVD. <laughs> so good. I want to thank Anita Baker for being here today. You are a delightful guest, and your music is so beautiful. Thank you. You're great, a wonderful host. Great that you're back in the music world thank with, you so much. and with such a wonderful, wonderful CD. Thank you. Uh, and all of you have just a, ha a wonderful holiday season. Yeah. I'm so happy that Papa and Sachi were able to meet today too. <laughs> Tune in Monday when the Today Shows and Curry stops by to share some wow. holiday traditions. And Access Hollywood's Nancy O'Dell helps us continue the 12 days of Christmas with a fun snowflake project, and it does involve glitter.